Hi, this is Carrie Shell from On Point Quilter. Last week I showed you how I decomposed a block. Now I'm going to take that block and put it into a new setting. Last week I created this flower box quilt by decomposing a, pr a pattern that I had purchased from Laundry Basket Quilts. And so I want to actually set this block on point. I'm going to show you a quick way to do that. I will go to block and I'm going to go to serendipity and I want to tilt the block. Now I'm going to select my flower box block and you'll notice that it comes in tilted at 30 degrees and I want to move that to 45. And when you get close you can just um, uh, uh, mouse click just to the left or the right and it will move a quarter inch and so now I'm exactly at 45 and I'm going to add this to the sketchbook and I can close this. So now I can view my sketchbook and now we can see my on point flower box and I'm going to select that and edit it and what I want to do now is actually add um, a series of half square triangles. Now this block came in at 12 and a half inches. Um, I will tell you what the size is later but frankly for purposes of drafting my half square triangles I don't need to know the finished size. I need to know some dimensions that are easy to work with. And I'm going to end up put putting a series of uh, five um, rows of half square triangles on each corner and so the easiest way to do that since it's going to be a series of five is I'm going to just change the block width to 10 by 10 and the snap points I'm going to change that to 10 by 10 as well and the graph paper cells at 10 by 10 and so you can see them here and I'm in easy draw right now so um, when it created the on point setting that's what it did but that's actually great because what I can now do is use the line tool and I'm going to draw each of the corners and just I'm drawing down to my new block and then I'm going to fill in going the other direction and now I just need to draw the diagonal lines and I need to do this for all four, cor four corners. Now I need to color the block. I'm not going to show you my full coloration uh, to save time, but we'll flip to the final uh, version. Here's my block fully colored. And now that I've got this created, I want to create a couple of half blocks, still using the 5x5 five five grid, basically uh, the size equivalent to a quarter of this block. So I'm going to do a block, new block, easy draw. And now I can still keep this at 10 by 10. I'm going to change my snaps to 5 by 5 and my graph paper to 5 by 5. So it's very easy to do this. Um, I'm going to actually use the grid on the left. And when I click on that, I'm going to change the columns to 5 and the rows to 5. And now I can drag the grid from the upper left corner to the lower right which creates a total of 25 squares. So I can close the grid setup now and I can pick up the line tool and with the line tool I'm going to just uh, draw the diagonal lines from corner to corner matching up all of my grid points.
and when I'm done with that I can go to the color tab and I can color this one as well. Once I have this one colored I will add that to the sketchbook as well and now I'm going to create one more uh, using the same um, size as the last one and this will be an easy draw. Now for this one I'm only going to do triangles on half of the block. So this is more like the setting that I used uh, for the on point uh, flower box. And again my snaps were set to 5x5 five five and my grid to 5x5 five five. and so I'm just connecting up all of the points here. And now I can color this. Now this one is complete. For the last block, I decided I wanted to use a very simple uh, Lemoyne star. And I am going to actually see if I can find it in the library. Okay, once I'm in the EQ library, I want to go to Classic Pieced, and then I want to go to Eight Pointed Stars. And if I scroll over, this is actually the block that I want, and it's actually called a Blazing Star. So I'm going to add that to the sketchbook and close that. And now I can go into my sketchbook and I can edit it and really the only editing I want to do on this one is to um, go ahead and color it. Now that I have this one colored I can add it to the sketchbook as well. So now it's time to actually work on the quilt layout. So I'm going to switch to the work table, work on quilt, and I'm going to want a horizontal quilt. So quilt, new quilt, horizontal. In this case, I want a setting of eight by eight. So I'm gonna to go to the layout and I'm going to uh, set that at eight blocks horizontal and eight blocks vertical. And um, earlier in my post, I told you the formula to calculate um, basically a half of my um, on point block and I'm going to round that to 8.75 so that I'm going to put that in the width and I'm going to um, uh, move over to the height and put 8.75 I'm going to put 8.75 in there as well and I'm going to do I'm going to just start with a narrow one inch border and I'm going to add and um, I think I'm going to um, I'm going to try a an eight inch border on that. I may end up um, changing that. And again, if you just type it into one and click on the slider bar, it will change all of them. So now I'm going to go to layer one. I'm going to set my block, which is going to open up the sketchbook. And I'm going to start by putting the Lemoyne star blocks in the corner. I'm going to put some of these um, half triangle blocks in. And I'm going to need to do a, some rotation here, but let me at least uh, fill in the sections or at least uh, the outside. And I'm going to actually start from the outside here and work in. And then I've got um, a series of these uh, full half square triangle blocks and then a few more of the uh, blazing star and all of the rest of these are going to be for that on point um, 
uh, setting. Now, to put that one in, because the block size is going to be twice as large as what I've got here, I'm going to need to go to Layer 2. And for Layer 2, I'm going to pull that block in, and I'm going to need to resize it. And so if my smaller block is 8.75, my larger block is going to be need to, need to be twice as large, so that's going to need to be 17.5. So once I've got that selected and I have the adjust tool, I can change the size of that block to 17.5 inches by 17.5 inches. And now it's... Um, Looks like it snapped into place correctly. Uh, no, I can tell when I look at the measurements up here that it didn't. So I can change that to 26 um, by, it looks like I need to be 8.75. And one of the things I can do to make the rest of those a little bit easier is go into the Quilt Work Table option. I want to go to my Snap Settings and I want to snap the block position to grid, but I'm going to change the grid to every quarter inch, and that um, that should help. Okay, now I can select the block I've already done, and again do a Control C, Control V, and I now can move that into place there. And that looks good. So if I do another Control V, I can get the next one. And the next one. I love the ability to set my those snap points here. Um, just makes it so much easier to put things in place. Now I am going to go back to layer one and I now that I'm on, back on layer one I'm going to do some rotations. So I'm going to select the rotate block and I'm going to just click on the blocks I want to rotate and for these ones here on this side, I need to do a double double rotation. And then on the bottom, I need to um, rotate uh, them even more. And this one, I only have to rotate um, two of the blocks. Now, I do need to also uh, put some plain squares in, and so in order to do that, if I use the paintbrush tool, and I'm actually going to start by the eyedropper because I want to use that color, and I can just paint each of these remaining squares. And I'm going to go ahead and um, add something for my borders here. And if I use the control key and select one of my borders, it will actually color all of them. Okay, so this is the setting that I ended up using for my laundry basket quilt. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see the actual pieced quilt, please check out my related blog post. And to keep up on new videos and tutorials, subscribe to my weekly newsletter at www.onpointquilter.com.